Hi, I'm Janelle Hovde, and I'm one of the pastors at St. John's Christian Church. Seasons of change. It seems like we're in a season of change more now than ever before, doesn't it? Our lives have forever been changed by a pandemic that continues to ravage our planet. And we've just come through an agonizing election fraught with more childlike tantrums than should ever have been displayed by any leaders or candidates who are supposed to be for the people and by the people. We've witnessed devastating destruction by winds, by hurricanes, by fires, leaving many people's lives shattered as they have to rebuild and restore, and as they hope that they can have some semblance of order of what they had before. Let us not forget, we have just voted in a merger between St. John's Christian Church and St. John's Wesleyan Church. This merger is going to bring about change for every member of both church body. Changes. Change is scary, and too often it's much more comfortable to cling to the past than to move forward into the here and now and dream of tomorrow's yet to be. If we continue to camp out in the past, we're unable to give 100% of ourselves to the present. And if we don't give 100% of ourselves, we're standing in the way of where God wants to lead us. Only God can be in two places at one time. Camping in the past prohibits us from reaching our goals. And oftentimes fear and insecurity tend to dominate our lives. And when we camp out in the past, too often we reduce the trauma of our pasts to little offenses. We tend to blot out the bad and remember the good. Yeah, change is tough. As we studied through the books of Genesis and Exodus, I saw and felt for the very first time the fear, the anxiety, the anguish of the Israelites while they were roaming the desert for 40 years. They saw many of God's miracles, didn't they? They walked on dry land through the Red Sea. They saw water come up out of a rock. They ate manna that fell from heaven. And still, they shouted at Moses. They grumbled and they complained to him, blaming him for bringing them into this land where starvation was surely going to be their demise. Their faith in God wavered as they walked around and around. And around, they wanted to go back to Egypt, at least to the Egypt that they believed it was. With time, their memory of what those 400 years were like were flowered over, beautifying those years of slavery. And yet those years brought with them a sense of comfort and peace. Those years were known. Here they are, wandering a desert without a house or a home. They're totally dependent on a God that they really can't see to care for them and to lead them towards the promised land. But how? Why? Can't you just hear their conversations? Fear of the unknown. Flight or fight. And certainly they were in flight mode. They were lamenting and mourning for their past and only the solid rock that they knew that they had left behind was Egypt. And in this new freedom that they were in, the fear and insecurities of an unknown future, placing their trust and faith and hope in God, all were fear for them, fear of the unknown, fear of change. It's for the same reason that so many abused people don't walk away from their abusers. At least with the abuser, you know what to expect. You anticipate their actions as well as your own reactions. It may not be good for your body, and your brain knows that, but there is safety and a false sense of peace because of the familiarity of the past situation and the continual hope that the abuser will get better. And frankly, is the next person going to be better or are they going to be worse? When I think of the play Fiddler on the Roof, and I envision the Jews being forced from their homes in Anatevka, and I hear their lamentations as they echo in song as they're going far, far from the home that they love. They had lost hope. And yet their lives were not the most pleasant there in Anatevka, were they? Surely it had to be better than where they were going and the unknown of what awaited them when they got there, wasn't it? As I walk along the streets of St. John's, I'm mesmerized by the brilliant and fiery fall colors of reds and ambers and golds and browns. 
I've stood and watched the wind pull leaves from the limbs that once gave them life. Watching some struggle as they are pulled away, forever changed. And as the wind carries them gently to the ground, they're now making a way for new growth that they hope will be bigger and brighter than they. They remind me that change means letting go of something old to embrace something new. Whether it is a habit, whether it is a mindset, whether it's how we choose to respond or how we choose to act, change requires letting go. Change is about hope. And it is my hope and prayer that as we grow and as we move forward in this season of change, that we are moving toward a kinder, more compassionate, more loving, more just world in which we live. God has never left us. And God will never leave us. Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father. How good it is to know. When there is nothing else that seems going right. That our hope and our faith. In you. Will carry us through. Help us to always remember. That you are the light and the hope, and the joy of our lives. Help us to cling to those things. Draw us near. Fill us so that we want to draw near to you. Guide and direct us, Father. Help us to show your love. Help us to show your light. Help us to show your grace. I wish to show you mercy into a world that so desperately needs you. It's the name of Yeshua we pray. Amen.